Hello there, internet dwellers. Welcome back to another video. Today, we are reacting to Children Under the House, the complete series. We have watched this before on the channel. It's by Vintage8. They're the one who did the Tanji virus. We watched that video also. This one, we did watch a couple of episodes, but I kind of left it halfway through, or I'm not sure where I actually left it. But luckily for us, they released a full series or a full video of the complete series. This was actually uh, submitted on my Discord by the Argonian Dragonborn, so thank you very much. It'll be nice to be reminded of the story and what actually happened. I, ca I can remember bits and bobs, but not a lot. So it should be interesting. This is an hour and 20 minute long. This comes right after th the longest video I did on my channel, which was Emesis Blue, which by the way, you should check out. There'll be a link here somewhere for you to go check out. It's one of the best animations I've seen on YouTube. Fantastic. But yeah, we're going to jump into this. Uh, before we do that though, Julia Liu, a child therapist, finds that a young girl's imaginary friends might be more than they seem. So get ready, guys. Tuck in. We're gonna go. I think that this already has subtitles, so we don't... Yeah. Last week, I purchased a repossessed storage locker. Inside was an old desk, an outdated computer, and a filing cabinet. Okay. The letterhead of a few loose documents read the office of Julia Liu. From what I could find, she was a successful child therapist in Kate's Crossing from the late 70s to early 90s. Her obituary stated that she died on December 18th, 2015. Okie dokie then. Okay. At a glance, this seemed like a typical haul. Typical if not for the collection of VHS tapes hidden in the false bottom of the desk drawer. Yeah, I remember really liking how this went, like the story. Hey John, million dollar idea. A way to share a video without waiting on the mail. What do you think? Anyway, as I said on the phone, I think this may be the right, give me a sec, way guys. to give you a speed on what I'm dealing with here. Turn these down and a bit. before you ask, no, we don't have releases for the family. They refuse to have their likeness involved in any way. However, they did allow me the use of Jessica's drawings. We will Go need down. to change their names when we get to the writing stage. Okay. Regardless, I think you'll be able to see why I think this will make one hell of a book. Wow. The basic, well, I so, guess the right? best stuff in life like the best kind of um, films and that are based loosely on real events, I guess. Well, questionable, I guess, like Lords of the Rings. You know, they were based on certain places around England, I think, and Wales. After and... our first session, each member of the family was given the standard questionnaire. The results are as followed. Okay. The patient's name is Jessica Daniels. Jessica, or Jess, as she prefers to be called, is seven years old. Normal birth, no complications, no no medical issues. Okay. She's intelligent, sweet, friendly, and highly empathetic. Why is the volume the thing there? Go away. In Houston, Texas, where she never had issues with school or socializing with okay. kids or adults. Okay. She moved to Louisiana. The family bought the Clark's house. Beautiful house. I love how it's built up on columns. And I'm sure you remember the Clark's from your time here. Sweet old couple. They own that little dive you used to drag me to for lunch. Diner. What was it? Oh yeah, the Burger Shack. The Burger Shack. <clears throat> but anyway, according to her mother, Carol, just had a particularly tough time adjusting. Mm -hmm. She didn't notice anything out of the ordinary until the second week, Wednesday night to be exact. They think it was after midnight when Jess ran into her mother's room screaming. She claimed there were people living under the house. Oh dear. Carol dismissed this as a nightmare, but it started happening night after night until Jess Want finally to play? What's your to name? sleep in her room. She moved the child's bed to her room, but Jess continued to wake up saying the same thing. She could hear people talking under the floor. Mm. Carol made sure to note that Jess never had problems sleeping in Houston. Adam, the child's father, fed up with having the child sleeping in the room, devised a simple solution. He brought her under the house, tried to show her that- Listen, there I'm trying to get laid here, love. And according to Adam, there wasn't, but Jess was convinced she saw something. The girl got into a ball and screamed until her voice gave out. Okay. She's been mute since that day. Been mute since. After Damn. After a series of tests and multiple... She screamed out her voice no box. ...no find anything wrong. There's nothing hindering the girl from speaking. She Therefore, just doesn't want the to? the conclusion is that her condition is mental in nature. Mm. The drawings you are seeing are currently her only form of communication. She needs to get better at that, man. observations and the questionnaire, I have a few thoughts on the other family <laughs> She's members. seven years old. Carol Daniels. She's the children's primary caregiver. 
From what I can observe, she's a caring mother. However, she is deeply resentful of her husband, Adam, for forcing them to move... <laughs> Dude looks like a stoner. Crossing. Adam Daniels is an obvious workaholic. He spends the majority of his time at work. I don't see the point in that. Like, what's the point in having a family if... I mean, yeah, you got to work to live and stuff, but most people would, would love to spend more time at home. But the people who have a family and decide to just work, I don't, I don't understand that. Like, you're just being an absent father, basically. I mean, obviously, some, some people, they have no choice. They work long hours and stuff. But usually those people, they get longer breaks because of that. Or they, you know, take a few more breaks. But these people who just go to work and would rather be at work than at home... Why have a family, Brother, you know? Typical early teen. He wasn't happy about the move, but seems to be adjusting adequately. Okay, so there's Adam. Give me a call after you digest this material. Love the talk strategy. Okay. End of questionnaire. Is that a questionnaire? So that was the first episode, I think. This is the second. Good news, Mrs. Daniels will allow. Oh, good news, Mrs. Daniels will allow me to re tape record my voice during the sessions. I will splice in Jessica's pictures and give general descriptions and notes when appropriate. Yeah, I do like the style of like analog horrors VHS. It's really good. It's different. Session one. They did another series called In the Static, I think, which I might check out. Hi Jess, my name is Miss Julia. How are you today? I'm okay. Has your mom or dad told you why you're here? To talk. So how about we get to know each other? Would you like that? No. Okay. Ooh. What's your favorite food? Mine, spaghetti. Fries. It's a very basic meal. What's your favorite color? Blue. I like that one too. Blue's a good color. Tell me about your family. How she meant to tell what? How? Through pit Mum likes to cook and drink. Dad is a freaking Reddit mod, apparently. <laughs> uh my brother is a Talkaholic on the sex, sex hotlines. And this is me. I'm sad. And I have a toy with an eye missing. Why are you frowning? No reply. Okay. So how about you tell me who that is? Yeah, who is that? Solid snake. Solid bear. <laughs> Good one, Ryan. Did your mom or your dad get him for you? No. 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 <laughs> he belongs to my friend. That's very sweet. Tell me more about your friend. I want to make a note here. She stared in the corner of the room as if she was waiting for permission. She then shook her head in the negative. Doesn't want doesn't want to talk. Is someone here, Jess? Is that your friend in the corner? Are you, are you fucking crazy, Jess? Damn, your friend looks a little bit- Another note, that clearly looks like a face. It appears that she has an imaginary friend. <sighs> I've, I've said this multiple times, guys. What's their name? Maybe we could all play together. Her name's Mia, right? Note, ah. she would no longer participate in my questions at this point. Regardless, I thought this was a decent- Yeah, like if my child started drawing drawings like that, I'm like, no, I'm good. Session. Let's try to talk by the end of next week. End of session one. Okay, so that was episode two. So this is episode three. Okay. So how are you doing today? Fine. And what did you do? <laughs> you know, I remember on uh, Tumblr when I was a teen, because there's a lot of angsty teens on Tumblr. I mean, I don't know if there still is, but 
<laughs> there was that there was that famous quote like I'm fine and it was like then it did that little acronym thing fucked up insecure neurotic emotional <laughs> good okay cool man you, why don't you just say that let's play a game if a genie came out of a bottle and granted you three wishes what would those be hmm interesting you know what I'd wish for? I'd wish for things that added to me rather than just give me things. I want to be given traits that can get me to where I want to be. Maybe I'm not confident enough. I'd wish uh, I'd wish to be more charismatic and confident. That would be one. Two, I'd wish to be more disciplined with myself. I, mean, I probably could probably put it all in one wish, to be fair, but I don't like the thought of just being given these things. Three, I'd like to be intelligent and, uh, you know, more intelligent, more uh, sensible with money and stuff. I mean, you can learn these things I'm on your own, but... Person. Loves the beach. To eat what I want and not gain a pound. And to fly. I'm hoping the last one can be true. A Let happy dress. My God. Back to Houston. She wants to go back to Houston. And she wants to free all of the, uh, the people from, from under the house. Are these angels? Is this who you think lives under your house? Kinda. Jess, speak up. So I mean, right up. Me? I wish they could. They're bound there. Let's talk about your friend, okay? I don't think... Okay, John. Again, the girl stared into the corner of the room, almost like she was waiting for permission. Is that your friend? What's their name? No reply. Come on. Would you tell me their name if I gave you a sucker? Beg your pardon. <laughs> If I gave you one of these, <laughs> that's beating the shit out of her. One for you and one for them. One Once for again, you, the one for them. The corner of the room, then shook her head yes. How do you shake your head yes? Oh my god, she's got a red goatee. Yeah, it's Mia. This is what I remember. She was ripped in half by no. something. I have to admit, I found that image quite disturbing. No shit. However, it isn't the creepiest imaginary friend that I've had drawn for me. Does your friend live under the house? Yes. See, even at this age, like seven, I would be, I don't know why this girl isn't more terrified. I would be, if I saw a person like half, cut, cut in half, weird eyes, blood coming out their mouth in the corner, just like looking at me like that, like a freaking... I don't know, like a bear or something. I'd be terrified as a kid. I don't know how Jess or whatever her name is isn't more scared. Maybe how she many is. Friends live under the house. Ten, maybe more. Why do you think they're there? Hmm. They can't leave, that's why. Are you still scared of them? No reply. Would you like them to go away? Oi! No, a picture frame fell off the wall. It was located in the corner of the room she claimed her friend was standing. Needless to say, it gave us both a good jump. Ha ha. Ha ha, Jess. Try that shit with me again so, and you get one of these again. Friends. She's got three, two black eyes already. Say, but she's having trouble finding someone to say it to. Most likely the father. For homework, I'm going to try and have dad ask questions. Mirror what we're doing at home. I don't right, think the dad John, gives a shit. Chat <laughs> Bye. Oh, God. Yeah, whatever, honey. I'm here doing my work. It's, it's work's just like freaking <laughs> NSFW cosplay. He's a, he's a moderator there. A little late, but I think I have rats. Something has snuck into my office and eaten all the candy. You think you have rats? Why are you telling me this? Jules, or whatever your name is, Julie. I don't care about that. <laughs> I need to stop being so 
Hey John, tomorrow is Jess's appointment, but I had a few thoughts I'd like to share, so forgive me if I start rambling. You and I have seen quite a few disturbing children's drawings. Yep. But I must admit, after re-examining this drawing, I feel there is something oddly true about this image. I feel like this drawing is rooted in something the child has seen, perhaps a movie or something on the news. Maybe Dean tried to scare her, or it could be as simple as a scary story. Mm. I've even thought that maybe the imaginary children might represent friends she left behind in Houston. Maybe Maya was her Listen, you're giving this girl too much credit. She's dumb as fuck. <laughs> Stop, Ryan. Stop being mean. Once, well, maybe, maybe, maybe a child's brain is more clever than we think it is, and the fact that it it conjures up these things and replaces them with trauma. You know that I guess that's what happens. You you replace traumatic things with things that are more comfortable to you to remember, or you just completely block stuff like that out. <laughs> So hey Jeff, today I would you like to play another game? Let's draw a picture of you as an adult. No, oh, okay. Interesting. Just her hanging. Stop, Ryan! She wants to be a doctor. That's cool. Why do you want to be a doctor? To help people. That's very noble of you there, I'm Jess. I'm sure you will. That's a very good quality to have. So, what does Maya want to be when she grows up? She can't. She's dead. No. As you might suspect, John, Jess once again became fixated with the same corner of the room. Mm -hmm. She shook her head in the negative over and over, and the motions became more and more aggressive. And as I was about to stop the young girl, Jess picked up a crayon. Okay. Mia doesn't get to grow up. She doesn't get to grow, actually. She's split in half. Why is that, Jess? It's an interesting point, actually. If you were, like, cut in half at a young age, and you survived, you'd still grow, right? Like, your arms and stuff would grow at, like, a normal rate. It's not like you'd just stop growing. That, of course you would. What am I saying? No. I'll be honest, John. I was scared to ask that question. Everybody gets to grow up, Jess. Not if they are dead. You think Maya is dead? No thinking involved here. Doctor, whatever your name is, therapist. Oh, okay, yeah, I remember this. She was in a boot of a car. I think she was kidnapped. And then they crashed, and she was split in half. That's been one hell of a crash. Damn, it went straight into a wall. Like, you didn't see that wall there. How stupid was this driver? What is wrong with you, Ryan? Stop. It's a child. Okay. Man, but I mean, to be split in half of that, a car must have came, Why like, and, like, hit, hit the back like that. I mean, at such speed. Then again, it was shown that they went into a wall. Why was she in the trunk? She doesn't remember dark times man but she knows bad people put her there now she lives under the house with her friends see this was my question before what can you tell me about her friends like what, what how does this correlate to the house was she from the house did she live there they are all very sad or is this like is the the house like a only i can see them is the house like a purgatory for these children so of some kind? Play with the other friends? Some of them. Some of them scare me. Yeah, no shit. You're talking to dead children, man. And That's terrifying. Because they want to hurt me. You should start you should learn Muay Thai. Brazilian jiu-jitsu and forced me to live under the house. Oh, so they want to kill Does her. Does Maya want to hurt you? Maya protects. Yeah. Maya's the protector. Time's up. Before you go, Jess, can you do me a favor? For our next session, can you tell me more about your friends? Draw them? Yes. 
by the way, they are sorry about eating the candy. Ah, so it wasn't rats. Note, and I'm sure you will ask, I don't know how she knew I was out of candy. There was a moment she was alone when she first arrived. Maybe she peeked in the desk. That's likely it, or the child is talking to the dead. <laughs> yeah. That's not weird at all. End of session three. Good stuff, man. Usually my conversations with Mrs. Daniels don't extend too much beyond the session and pleasantries. Mm -hmm. But this time I could tell the woman was in distress. She asked quite a few questions about Maya. I, of course, told her that most children have imaginary friends and that I wouldn't worry. Yeah. She was also very curious about the Clarks and if they had any children. Of course, as far as I know, the Clarks didn't. When I questioned her curiosity, she mentioned that they have found some old toys, uh -huh. such as Jess's bear, a toy truck, and a few other things. What if it's the toys of these kids that kind of work like a kind of anchoring point to this house? The souls kind of anchor to the toys, almost. Mrs. Daniels also mentioned that Jess has been taking things and hiding them in her room, as well as under the house. I'll have to ask her about this in the next session. Hmm. I'll send Adam's homework after I've had a chance to go through the material. Adam's homework? I don't expect to be too impressed. Homework. The following drawings and notes are, are the results of the homework I gave Adam and Jess. So Adam is the... Is Adam the dad? Or the brother? How are you doing, sweetie? Oh, wait, okay, yeah, it's the dad. Fine, I guess. How was the thing with Dr. Lou? Good. We like her. We? Get out. Listen, they better be paying rent. Do you know how expensive this place is? Do you know how long I spend on Reddit? We? Mia and me. Maya. How do you guys say it? Maya, Mia, Mirai. Right, Mia. I forgot. So, are you looking forward to school? Not really. I'm scared kids are going to think I'm weird. Honey, why would you think that? Because I am. Nothing wrong with being weird, man. But well, depends what kind of weird you are. I can't talk. If you know, like, shoving your fingers up your ass and fucking... And I see ghosts. They're imaginary, not dead. God, Adam isn't very helpful, is he? I'm sure Dr. Liu is telling you the same thing. Mia is not real. Of course she is. I can see her behind you. Cut it out with that shit, Jess. You hurt me as feelings, and now I'm angry. You made them mad. Oh, God. Now I am mad. Oh, God. Fine. Fucked up, insecure, neurotic. Get ready for dinner. Night two, Thursday. How was your day, baby? Don't call me baby. I'm seven years old. Fun. That looks fun. Brilliant. Hanging out with a corpse. Mia read me a story. What was the story? What, is she burning something there? I 
Oh, she is. She's burning something. Wait, what? What is that? Oh, like hopscotch. So it's playing outside. I was having a barbecue. What's wrong, Dad? You look scared. Go watch TV. I have more work to do. Somebody just posted an, a, a stupid post saying that I'm a, a simp. I must ban them from this m m Reddit. We'll do the question thing later. Couldn't think of anything funny to say, guys. <laughs> so I just came out with the cringiest thing ever. Night four, Saturday, no homework. Night five, Sunday, no homework. Night six, Monday, Carol does the assignment for Adam. Dad had to work late, so we are going to do the homework, okay? Okay. You think I'll ever hear your voice again? I don't know. Sometimes I think about talking you and Dean back to taking you and Dean back to Houston. You can't do that. They will never let me leave. I don't think they'll let any of us leave. They don't sound like friends at this point. They, they sound like captures. Who? I know you've seen them. Out of the corner of your eyes. Hear things. Notice things aren't where you left them. They are always there. Who, baby? Get out of my house now. Don't ever freak me out like that again. The children under the house. Good lord, man. The dad's looking like salad fingers. Man, they're surrounded. We're their family now. Oh, my camera stopped recording. That! And you can't leave family, right? All right, Don. What's his name? Dom Toretto? There is a lot to unpack here. Mm, quite. At times, I feel as if she was antagonizing Adam with the drawing. Almost like she was trying to push him away just to see if he'd stay. Unfortunately, Adam did just as she expected. Adam's a nonce. I mean, well, no, not Jess literally, but he's... probably won't speak until she can finally let this world go and accept that her parents' problems aren't her fault. Mm. Speaking of which, I probably should recommend a good marriage counselor for Adam and Carol. All right, John, I'm looking forward to your thoughts as usual. Homework. Lovely jubbly. Who is this John guy? I want to know who John is. John, I actually know John is the guy who's going to be writing a book, right? Earlier today, Carol stopped by the office and announced she handed me a folder of additional drawings by Jess. I could tell that she had been drinking, but it wasn't to the point where I felt it impaired her th thinking. Thinking. Sit out with your front teeth, guys. The notes included on this tape are from memory. Regardless, I think you will find them worrisome. Conversation. Hello, Dr. Lee. How are you? Fine, Carol. What can I do for you? Do we have... Did we have an appointment? No. I'm here alone. I feel so damn stupid. 
I let myself believe it all could be true. I'm not following, Carol. I'm sorry. I'm kind of all over the place. A small part of me is relieved. And the other part is just really worried about my little girl. Maybe start at the beginning. Have you looked at the homework? Of course. I let myself believe it all. I let myself believe it. All of it. Jess seems so convinced, so sure. Oh my god. Those are all the kids. I thought, well, hell, maybe there, they, there are dead people living under the house. After all, my kid can't be crazy. Jess is not crazy. She's just a kid dealing with a lot. I started seeing them too, Dr. Lou. Who did you see? Her friends. Uh-oh. The ghouls. The ghouls. I believe in an afterlife. It's not that big of a stretch. I believe in an afterlife. It's not that big of a stretch, right? There are lots of reasons that could cause this stress. Exhaustion. My son has seen things too. Man. Things he can't explain. He's heard Jess talking to another girl. But always finds her alone. Man, kids and their creepy imaginary friends. Oh, there she is. God, how big are her arms? That's something from Little Nightmares. You know that bear of hers? We've thrown it away a dozen times. Mr. Mr. Bartle. Mr. Bartleby. And it comes back every time. You know, I have a colleague I think could help. Maybe you and your husband could benefit from a session. This got nothing to do with- No, I don't need that. You're not listening to me, Doc. I know all of this is just in her head. Is it though, if you're seeing stuff? What happened? I had the whole yard dug up. Every inch. Every tree. Outside the house. It's under the house though, isn't it? Like actually underneath the house, not in the garden. It's in the foundation. It's like monster house. And underneath, oh, never mind. Well, I see nothing wrong here, but I've dug a hole that's too big. I can't get out. Police even brought dogs. Damn, man. All this taxpayer's money. The bloodhound. You know what we found? Nothing. Interesting stuff. There are no kids under the house. Well, thank God for that. So your kid's just crazy. Just a box of toys and a few menus from some old restaurants called the Burger Shack. 
Okay, well, it's got something to do with the burger shack then. Because that was what the old... Um, that was the old play. The old... The people who used to live there owned that place. But then again, yeah, they, they would have their own things to the burger shack if they lived there or whatever. Toys. Burger shack. Thanks for listening. Adam thinks we've all lost our minds. It's just good to have someone to talk to. Talk to. I still need to call the clerks. See if they want their stuff. So they moved out. We will see you tomorrow. Bye. Damn. So where did the clerks move to? That's what you need to know. I am very concerned for Jess as well as her entire family. It's fortunate that she was able to let go of the delusion, but it is concerning how quickly she chose to buy into it. Hmm. If things continue to deteriorate, we may need child services to step in. Let's speak after you get this. Talk soon, John. Uh, I changed my mind. I don't want to do a book on this. This is creepy. Right. So I think maybe there was one more episode that I've watched. I can't believe I can't remember most of it. Hi, John. It's a few hours before Jess's session, and I just received a phone call that absolutely made my day. Mm-hmm. Jess spoke. Adam called and asked oh. if I had a reference for a marriage counselor. This is an incredible step forward. I'd like to think that it was something I did, but the likelihood is Carol's recent actions have had an effect. Yeah, true. Digging up the ad. Or at least in his own words, it's time to focus on what's important. Our marriage, This gives not me the a children. tremendous amount of hope. Even if they can't save their marriage, they may be able to learn how to cope and keep their problems from spilling onto Jess. Here we go, then. Note, considering what I have reviewed in the homework and the conversation with Mrs. Daniels, I was surprised to find Jess in such a chipper mood. Why was she in a good mood? That's not allowed. Kick her in the face. Mia looks happy. Hello, Jess. How are you today? I'm great. Really excellent. And Mia says hi too. Oh, hello Maya. So what's new with you? Note, she opened a manila folder and handed me a note from her dad. Okay. Hey sweetie, I'm sorry about the last few weeks. I'm sorry about a lot of things. I can do better and I will do better. For you, your mum and your brother, I love all of you. More than I love myself, and I'm going to start showing it. I'm ready to start believing you, baby. Right after I take a look at the Reddit, because there are some naughty people on there, and my Discord kittens, they need to be protected. Love, Dad. No, clearly Adam is turning a corner. I believe this will be very important in getting Jess to start speaking again. Mm-hmm. This is great, Jess. So is this why you're in such a good mood? Yeah. Well, that's good. And... Dad wants to take us on vacation. You might go... We might go to the beach. Or the mountains. He said Maya can come too. Isn't that great? No, oh, it's terrible. Of course it is. Either place sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. I'll keep my fingers crossed for the mountains. 
I wouldn't. Did you have a chance to do the whole Hell no. I mean, the mountains are good for views and stuff, but they're freaking mountain lions and stuff. It's, okay, so she did the homework. <sighs> Maya helped. No, John, I thought I was prepared to see what she wanted to show me. I was wrong. Okay, there's a burger. A burger balloon. Something happened at Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria. Brad. Oh yeah, I remember this is the story of like the other kids. So that's Brad. The bad people gave Maya Mr. Battleby. That's how they stole her. Oh no, it's not Brad. Mia wishes she didn't leave her family. Why do I do that? Why do I switch between one way of saying it and another way of saying it? Stick to one way! Mia's family. Shelly. So where, which one of these is Mia? Oh my god. Shelly, what happened to you? Shelly was scared until they gave her some medicine, but it was too much, then she woke up under the house. Wendy. What's that in the window? Jesus. What happened to Wendy? Wendy remembers being dead before she died. Being dead was supposed to be freedom. She was... But it was another trap, another prison. She was dead before she died. Oh, as in like, she didn't live properly because... What the hell is that haircut? This guy's gone Super Saiyan. Zack, the boy who burns. Zack doesn't remember his family. Every day was blurry until the last day. Zack was stuffed in a fireplace after his neck broke. Oh. Who's Brad then? Brad. Brad is the oldest. He was someplace dark for a long time. They forgot him and he died. He thinks his body is still where they left it. Why? What attracts them all to this house, though? That's the thing. Mark. Hello, everybody. It's me, Markiplier, and I'm a baby. I'm a child under the house. Oh, God. Was he shot in the head? Mark remembers running, but he didn't get far. Ah. The last thing he remembers is a loud bang that he woke up into the house. These poor kids. Kate. Kate is the scariest one under the house. She has a hand for every hand that hurt her. Wow. Oh my god. That's a lot of hands. No, these images are coming from somewhere. I can't believe all of this is the product of her imagination. A young girl shouldn't be able to recall some of these details. There's a serial killer amongst them. So who are these people? Unless it's different people. Yeah, who are those people? Not everyone under the house wanted to talk. Ah, uh, got you. Most can't remember anything, but they are mad because they want to remember. Well, thank you for doing this. Will it be okay with you and Maya if I keep these? Sure, take them. Have them. Thank you. So Jess, why do you think you stopped speaking? I traded my voice for eyes. You already had eyes, Jess. They needed me to see, so I needed 
to give something to get something. It was the only way to see my friends. Damn. So you don't think you'll ever speak again? Maybe. It depends. Maybe if you help the children. Under the house. Depends on what? If they ever get to leave. They've made he's she's made a deal with these demons. Can I ask you a question? Absolutely. You can ask me anything. Mia says you talk to an imaginary friend too. It's why she knew we could trust you. Oh, she's talking about on the tapes. Who is John? Oh, good lord. John, I've never mentioned your name to Jess or her parents. They know I'm interested in writing about Jess's case, but they don't know that I'm collaborating with another therapist. Interesting. I need to think about this a little more. I'll get back. If to I was you. John, I'd be shitting my pants. I'm like, whoa, 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 hang on a sec, Julia, whatever your freaking name is. Don't involve me in this shit. I'm shitting my pants. <laughs> I don't want to make this book anymore. Tell him to fuck off. <laughs> oh, God. John, I know you disagree, but I'm leaving for the library. I have to know if any of this is true. This is new to me now, I think. This is, this is new. I know you think there's a logical explanation not rooted in the supernatural. But unfortunately, I just don't see it. There is not a natural explanation for this. I have never mentioned your name. Your name isn't written anywhere in my office. It's not even on the tapes. And no, I don't edit these videos in the same location I see patients. I've gone over every suggestion you gave me, and none of them line up. Not one. Okay. Look at it this way. If I find nothing, this will be your chance to rub it in. Tell me you told me so. God knows it wouldn't be the first time. But if I do find something, then I'm not sure if I'm the right person to help this girl. Yeah, you need the Ghostbusters. Research. Okay. It took most of the day, but after going back nearly 10 years, I found what I was looking for. Brad Landry. Oh, God. Please continue to search for Brad Landry 8. Please, okay. Brad was the one who, have you seen this child, Zach Hardy? The police are looking for any information on Zach Hardy. Parents say he disappeared Friday afternoon while playing in the front yard alone. His mother, Candice Hardy, said, I went in to get him a glass of water, and by the time I came back, he was gone. Zach's disappearance is just one of many that have plagued the area. 1984. He was nine as well, damn. Never found. Please close the case. Wendy Peterson, eight. Missing police. Uh, police on their leads. Wendy Peterson 8 was last seen getting into a large white van in Kate's Crossing Park. The witness, her brother, Tom Peterson, said she was playing with the other kids. I figured she'd be safe. There were so many grown-ups just hanging around. I went to get some snacks from the concession stand, and by the time I came back, she was getting into someone's van. Tom was not able to see the driver or the license plate. If you know anything about Wendy Peterson or the white van in question, please, please encourage citizens to reach out. Please, Sheriff... Another child missing. Police have no leads. Kate Jones, 10. Taken. Police baffled. Child abductions or serial killer. 10 years of missing children. Shit. Kate Jones. The one with loads of hands. Oh, God. Mark Williams. He was shot. Shelley Cameron. One year later, Shelley Cameron still missing. Oh, God. Dozens of children missing across four different parishes. The FBI, the Tanja Pahara Parish Sheriff's Department, and Se what? S S Sears of... What? 
and friends are searching for nine-year-old Mia Martinez. Oh shit, this is Mia. Who disappeared Saturday at the Kate's Crossing Parish Mall. We looked away and she was just gone, Mrs. Martinez said. We all ha we have all hands on deck here, said Chris Benton, the FBI agent in charge. Damn, man. This thing must be supernatural. There's no way you can just keep getting away with... I mean, it was the 80s, though. Or was it at this point? The okay. S and scores of neighbours. That's what it said. Interesting. Sad end to the Mia Martinez investigation. Body of missing girl found in trunk of known criminals. An accident leaving two dead appears to have also ended the life of Mia Martinez. The young girl has been missing since Saturday. Her kidnappers, Ralph Kemp and Jared James, both frequent residents of the parish penitentiary, crashed into a light pole, light pole late Sunday night. Heavy alcohol use was likely the culprit. The young girl's body was found in the trunk of the vehicle. It is believed that the child was a victim of child a child trafficking scheme. Autopsy results showed that the girl had high doses of heroin. This is dark, man. This took a dark turn. Mein Gott. Poor Mia. Poor everyone. So it could be a part of a child trafficking ring. They're all real, John. Shit. They were someone's children. Someone's babies. But why are they under that house? Why are they drawn to Jess? Yeah. Did the Clark see them too? I understand you want out of this, John. I know you're not that comfortable. Hold on. Uh-oh. Who's there? Hello? Speaking? What? When? I understand. Thank you. John. Adam was just murdered. What the f- What? <laughs> what? When? Hang on a sec. Adam was murdered. What, what happened? What the hell? What the fuck? Adam, man. God, he must have came across the wrong user on Reddit. Stepped on the wrong toes, man. Stepped on the, stepped on the wrong Discord kitten. And got met with a samurai sword. A katana. Across the neck. Adam's funeral went like you might imagine. I didn't expect a big turnout, though. Just waifus everywhere. Apparently, Adam was more popular than I thought. Even the Clarks came to pay their respects. Holy shit, that guy's got a big beard. Hello, darling. But I suppose Kate's Crossing has always been a friendly place. This is all happening in Kate's Crossings. <laughs> nice. Okay. Is he on a papaya? What is this? Is that what it's called? Papaya? And he like put Poor the body Adam on the- Poor probably wouldn't agree. Police said it was a carjacking gone wrong. A closed casket funeral. I don't want to know what they mean by gone wrong. Uh, it means that he didn't comply and was shot in the face, probably. Or maybe he did comply and was still shot in the face, you know. You... Man. I really feel for Carol and the kids. With everything they've already been through, I imagine the situation seems impossible. Hmm. I just want to help, but I really don't know how. Carol told me in passing that they were moving back to Houston. She said Jess wanted to do one more session before they left. Damn. I should be hopeful, but I keep thinking about what she wrote in the homework. They will never let me leave. What will happen if she tries to leave? Do I show Carol the articles and beg her to stay? Or let them go and hope for the best? Maybe you should tell and them. And if they do go, how do I help those poor children trapped under the house? You gotta find the source. It's just too much, John. Too much. I have a week before her session. I'm going to think it over. To be fair, yeah, what could you do? I, I wouldn't know what to do. Like, you know what's happening, but how are you meant to... They obviously need to be found or something, or their culprits need to be found. The No. Suspects? I've gone back and forth on this, but after the session, I'm going to share the articles with Carol. Yeah. If it were me, I'd want to know. Yes, but maybe it's... 
I don't know. Is it a bad time? It's probably never a bad time to say, oh, by the Hi, way. Hi, Jess. How are you today? Your daughter's talking to real-life dead kids. I'm sad. I know, but that's okay. It's natural to be sad when we lose someone we care about. I didn't lose him. He was taken. Oh, God. Taken by whom? Hey? Oh my god, Jess. I'm so sorry. You shouldn't be seeing something like this. It's okay, I'm kind of used to it. Damn. Is that Shelly in the background? Yes. She liked following Dad. Oh god, okay, why? She said the man in the mask seemed familiar man she's got freaking ghosts as detectives now it was a mask it looks like mr clark without the beard does she know who that is no no but she heard his voice before i have to start my camera really again where she doesn't remember. Well, what kind of use is Shelly then, Jess? Jess! Shaking her violently. All right, hang on, guys. Shelly disappeared a decade ago. That can't be a coincidence. She's sorry. But she doesn't remember just pieces of things. Okay. Jess, I want you to tell your friends that I want to help them, but I need any information they can give me. Can Shelly or Maya ask the others? Anything might help. There we go. No. She started acknowledging people in every direction. I got the uneasy feeling that this room was filled with children. Well, yeah, come on. She's trying to help. This is what you guys wanted, right? Justice. Freedom. Once the young girl looked in charge, she placed her finger on her lip to silence whoever was speaking. Finally, she pointed across the room, then started writing. Mm, damn. She's in charge. Food. They remember hearing people talking. It's the Burger Shack place. It was loud, but the medicine kept it quiet. It was dark. All of them remember the dark. Some remember more faces than others. Money. There was always money. The woman was nice. Ooh, okay. She always brought food. Mark said maybe it was a man. What, a real feminine man. He was nice too. He brought toys. Thank you, Jess. Everybody. I'll do my best to try and figure this out. You never told me who John was. John is a friend. We went to school together. We worked together. <laughs> Let me give you his address. Let me give you his uh, social security number. Whoa, whoa. He lives in Florida Jules! Now with his wife and kid. Stop it. And what Maya has noticed is that I sent him tapes of our conversations. I was hoping he could help me with your case, and we were thinking about writing a book about you and your friends. So he's not a ghost? No, not yet anyway. Does this bother you? Or your friends? He needs to die. No. Mia was hoping to meet a new ghost. Nah, oh, that's a shame. Someone that could help them move on or something. Well, you know this is goodbye, right? Goodbye, what do you mean? Yes, your mom told me that you were going back to Houston. Oh God, 
I'm not going back to Houston. She's gonna die? She's gonna kill herself? Why not? Oh god. What are you gonna do, Jess? Because I'm going to live under the house. No! The ones that don't remember will never let me leave. I'm going to try and talk to your mom, okay? Thanks, but she's not going to listen. Come visit me if you can. Damn. It's a very stoic young girl there. Just accepting her fate like that. Like before, the following notes are from memory. This is a conversation, I'm guessing. I want to thank you for everything you've done for Jess. It was my pleasure. Look, I want to talk to you about Jess's friends. I was having a bad day. Hell, a bad month. I let my imagination get away from me. Mrs. Daniels, they're real, and I have proof. The proof is in the pudding. That can't be true. We dug up the entire yard. We didn't find anything. That's because you weren't looking in the right place. They're in here. <laughs> Every name she gave me, I was able to find in the paper. She even knew how Mia perished. Then Jess isn't... Jess's problem is supernatural and we need the Ghostbusters. Then it's a good thing we're leaving. No, you can't leave. You can't. That's why I wanted to talk about. I was hoping you'd consider staying. Why? I'd like to try and help them. And for that, I need Jess. Also, she doesn't think they're going to let her leave. What does that mean? It sounds like a threat. According to Jess, it is. Then that's a good enough reason to leave, isn't it? Would you want to live with someone threatening your little girl? I understand, but this might cause more problems than solve. And then there's the other children. Look, I'm sorry about those children, I really am, but I have to worry about my kids first. Thanks for everything. W wait! She didn't say that, guys. Jess's last session was two weeks ago. Shit. The next day, Carol left with Dean and Jess. They didn't get more than two miles away from the house when Jess had a violent seizure. Shit. Jess hasn't been the same since. She no longer communicates. She just sits in the corner, blankly staring at the wall. Talk later, John. Oh my god, if I was John at this point, I'd be like... <laughs> Damn. Well, I hope you're happy, Carol. Review. I'm afraid we we're going to lose Jess. Yesterday, she had her fourth seizure. Oh my god. The poor child seems weaker by the day. Every time the phone rings, I'm afraid it's Carol calling me with the worst. Is she dead? It's like freaking uh, the end of Breaking Bad. The good news is that Jess still communicates. Each morning I find several of her drawings waiting for me in the office. Her mum should have listened. I hope that it's her leaving me drawings. Is that Jess? Well,
Oh god. Scary. It's scary where I am. It's surrounded by freaking demons, man. It's like another world here. It's dark and cold. I'm intrigued to know how this all links and where, how to stop this. Okay, well, at least Mia's with her. Dad isn't here. Damn. Shelley said he moved on. Uh, well, yeah, I guess these guys are stuck. Dad reached out, tried to take her along, but something kept her here. Oh man, that's sad. Same thing keeping us all here. They are so confused. They try to remember but can't. They are stuck in a loop that makes no sense. Oh, that should, that would be infuriating. They only recognize pieces of things. Is this going to happen to me? Oh, there's hope not, Jess. Is that the mum, Carol? Poor Carol. Lost a husband and a daughter. Tell mum she can leave. I'll be okay. So is Jess dead? Tell mum and Dean I love them. Was she like, what, comatose? Jess is not dead yet. Oh, jeez. There has to be a way to save this girl. A way to get her soul back in her body. Okay, so their souls the are time is running, running out. around. I called the Clarks in desperation. I was surprised they moved back to Kate's Crossing. Apparently, RV life didn't suit them. Mrs. Clark probably thought I was crazy. I can't imagine too many people who expect to get a call asking if they've seen ghost children in their home. Mm-hmm. Wendy, Mark, Kate, Shelley, Brad. I gave her Maya's name. Brad, Shelley. She's behind Wendy, it, I'm telling you. Mark, all of them. She was clueless. She was behind it. She couldn't recall anything weird ever happening in that house. Nope, she's lying. I must have sounded hopeless. She asked me several times to come by their place. Said we could talk over lemonade. I, of course, declined. I just don't have the time. Hmm. Well, she's probably trying to kill you. Just doesn't have the time. This is outside my realm of expertise. I probably should call a priest, but I've always been more comfortable behind a stack of books than kneeling on a pew. Hmm. Yes. The following are the notes I accumulated over three days of continuous research. I never would have imagined that there were so many books dedicated to spirits, ghosts, demons, and the afterlife. It's a big market for it, to be fair. A lot of people dying. What creates a ghost? Murder, especially those that remain unsolved. Sometimes the ghost will not move on until the murder is solved. Best hope of ending this, but who could have done this? What have you done to them? You psychopath. Two, lack of proper burial. Possible, most of the children have never been found. Time loops, ghosts might be stuck in their last moments. Why don't they remember their last moments? Is it like a trauma thing? Older ghosts may remember less and less of their former lives. But what if they already... But what if they already don't remember what's left? Is anything left? Emotions? Anger. Possession. Was Jess possessed? Don't demons possess people? Can ghosts possess people? Is that the case here? No, no, no. The children are victims too. They're just angry. It's like FNAF kids. They're just angry. They don't remember much. They're just angry. They know... What the hell am I missing? I don't know. 
I've been racking my head for days. What am I not seeing? Too many questions. Who could have done this? What is their motive? Connection between the kids? How does Ralph Kemp and Jared James fit in? Were they the killers? Were there others? Heroin? Why are the kids under the Clark's house? Is it the location or Jess? Why was Adam killed? What was the motive? It's gotta be linked to Jess somehow. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe there's a piece of something in one of the drawings I missed. It's going to be the burger. Look, there's going to be a burger thing. Or maybe in one of the newspapers. At one of the parties, there was an icon of a burger. Body of missing girl found in the trunk of known criminals. High dose of heroin in her system. Drugs and drug use. Effects of heroin can cause a dreamlike state. Is that why the children don't remember their last moments? Their last moments were a drug-induced dream haze. They are reliving that confusion. But why would you do this? What are you done that they stopped saying it, Ryan? They weren't murdered. The children were being trafficked. They died of like an overdose or escaping. What do you mean they weren't murdered? So this therapist turned into a freaking full-time detective. It's, it's like, like Jess said, okay. the ghosts only see pieces. Put all the pieces together. They were at a party. Oh shit. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's the bearded dude. Burger Shack, I knew it. Damn. Yeah, and there's what well, I knew it. They I knew they were involved. Look with the burger, look, the burger thing. It's the burger shack. It's the clacks. They were at the Burger Shack, John. They had to be. Those poor kids. And who do these drawings look like? Yeah, they look like Roger. Not Roger. <laughs> Thinking of Roger Clark, Arthur Morgan. The Clarks. Santa Claus and Mrs. Santa Claus. I mean, Mrs. Claus, whatever. Oh my God. It was the Clarks. And I've told them everything. I need to go to the police. But who's going to believe this? The Clarks are one of the most prominent families in Kate's Crossing. Okay. And I can't believe that a child's drawings will hold up in a court of law. No, you're going to have to find real evidence. I need to get Carol and those kids out of that house. And I shudder to think what would have happened if I took Mrs. Clark's offer for lemonade. I'd probably be under that house, too. I don't know if you'd be under the house. But the guy in the mask, I, I said Hello? it, would have like one of the Clarks. Really? That's incredible news. Yes, I'll be right over. And Mrs. Daniels, I have a lot to tell you. I don't think we can trust the Clarks, but we'll talk more when I get there. Oh dear. John, Jess woke up, but I'm sure you'll hear about this before you get the tape. I'm dropping this in the mail as I leave for the Daniels. If I or any of us disappear, it was the Clarks. That's a big, tall statement right there, brother. Okay. So is this going to be the final one here? The final tape. So many thoughts were racing through my mind as I drove to the Daniels home. The Clarks. Adam. The children. Jess. Why was she able to wake up now? What changed? Did I do something? Hell, maybe the ghost let Jess go. Maybe she escaped. Why does this feel too easy? Hmm. And why is it when you have somewhere to be, you hit every red light? It was like something was telling me to stay away. Well, that's an omen, that's for sure, but... The case must go on. It must be solved. 
The moment I walked through the front door, I found Mr. Clark pointing a gun in my face. Jess wasn't awake. I was lured here, and I didn't need to guess why. Oh shit. I knew in my heart that this was my fault. We were all going to die. Well, you obviously didn't. Unless this is like American Beauty. House call. John, I know you've heard me tell this story a dozen times now, but the following drawings are Jess's account of the event. Okay. Although she was unconscious for the majority of the experience, Jess was incredibly accurate. She was out of body, that's why. Clark's plan was simple. They were going to shoot us, then burn the place down. What, the, the house? Oh my god, that's a mean looking face. You were supposed to leave after your husband died. Why didn't you just leave? We tried, but Jess got sick. We figured kill your husband and we wouldn't have to kill the kids. What? How does that make sense? Now our hands are tied. Jess, I hope you can hear me because we need your help. We can't leave. Please don't hurt my babies. It doesn't matter. This is on you. Nice gross little salad finger there. What about the other children? Were your hands tied when you kidnapped them? Hurt them? We never hurt a single kid. It was just business. Just a business. What business? Tell that to the families you ruined. You might not have pulled the trigger or taken a life, but you sent them on their way. And that makes you worse. Okay, so they were literally... Yeah. You knew what kind of monsters you were feeding them to. That is mad. As nasty as it is, the money saved us. I'm alive because of it, and I'm not apologizing for surviving. Even the devil thinks he's justified. That's cute. But I think we have heard enough from you. Bang, bang. Shoot him and let's burn this place. Mum, I don't want to die. But that's too damn bad. Close your eyes, baby. Tell me. Do you even remember their names? John, I knew I only had one shot to survive this. I needed the children to remember. The children were in this house with the Clarks for years, mm -hmm. and they never made contact. I needed the Clarks to confess, admit to the crime, and if my time being a therapist has taught me anything, People want to validate their actions. You just need to know how to ask. Mm-hmm. I remember all of their names and faces. Guys, beards just got huge. You don't forget that. Mia, Mark, Wendy, Shelley, Zach, Brad, Kate, Sven, what the hell? Those little faces behind the cages. Oh god, it kept them in cages. We aren't monsters. I mean... Nobody wants to see a kid cry. Is that why you drugged them? Enough! You bitch! But what I can't figure is how you know those names. 
We had this place scrubbed. You shouldn't have gotten that from a box of toys. Toys I thought were destroyed. Okay, so they kept them in cage under that house. Makes sense. Simple. They told me. Hey, Mia. They remember you. Do you remember them? Oh, God. Spawn of Satan. We remember you now. Ah. We remember everything. You took us. Now we take you. Oh no! Oh God! What is happening? No! We're sorry! Oh really? Okay, so sure. The children ripped the Clarks apart, then dragged every piece back into the shadows. They left nothing, not even blood. Damn. Fair play. Fair play to the kids. Uh, that means they can rest easy, right? It's a shame Adam had to die, though. After that, Jess woke up. Hmm. The only thing left of the Clarks was their gun and a news story. Owners of the beloved Burger Shack are missing. Police have no leads. Clark's vehicle found, but police still have no suspects. Police fear the worst in Clark's disappearance. Well, it's one of those things where they're going to be remembered for being amazing. It's like Jimmy no Savile. No one ever knows. They accept us, and they will probably always be remembered as the kindly couple who owned the Burger Shack. Oh, it will all come out. Look at Jimmy. Look at Jimmy boy. But according to Jess, they got what they deserved. They got what they fucking deserved. Oh. So he did send him down to the devil. End of house call. Okay, nearly finished. So this is the epilogue. Final session. Wait, Jess is going to be able to speak again, right? It's been two weeks since Jess woke up. Carol said things felt different in the home. Brighter. She said it felt like a different house. Hmm. Good. Well, they got their justice. Carol told me they were finally moving back to Houston. Jess had been in a great mood since, but she still has not said a word. Interesting. Maybe the children took her voice with them. Oh, that's a shame. So how are you today? Great! Are you looking forward to moving back to Houston? I'm sure she is. All the friends are back there. I miss my friends. They don't miss you, Jess. I wish Dad was coming, but I know he's somewhere watching over us. I'm sure he is, Jess. Your mom said you still aren't speaking. Have you given it a try? No. Jess just shrugged and smiled. Okay. Looks like I got my wish. I got a happy Jess after all. There we go. GG's. GG's. Well played. Let's, let's clap it up, guys. Have you seen oh, never mind. or the <clears throat> others? I got my wish too. Ah, for all the kids to be free. They went to heaven. Woo. So they're like vengeful spirits. No, John. Her little voice was the sweetest sound. They are free now. Aww. That doesn't no, sound like a seven-year-old, though. That sounds like a three-year-old. the sweetest sound I've ever heard. We spent the rest of the session playing old board games. We had a good time, and then after, we said goodbye. Okay, so she got a voice back. That's good. Like I said, John, this would make one hell of a book. But I don't think it's a book I can write. 
At least not now. Maybe one day I'll come back to this case. Maybe. Besides, no one will ever believe it. I think it would be better to just let these children rest. Yeah, I don't think... I mean, it'll... Sorry to waste your time, John. We it'll be a good fictional book. Come down for Thanksgiving. What? John's there like, so what? Hang on. Why did I just listen to all this then? I'll get no bloody money. Ooh. That was a good story. I like, I like the twists and turns there. It's very good. Very underrated as well. Although 164,000 views, not bad, actually. Um, it's been ten, okay. 10 years since I've looked at these tapes. I thought about destroying them, but that doesn't feel right. I followed up on Carol, Dean, and Jess. Okay. Carol has a job in some accounting firm. She never remarried. Is Jess in uh, medical school? She's studying finance. Or studying for... Jess seems to be happy. She's about to graduate and move to New York for college. Carol says she doesn't remember Maya or the ghost children. Neither her or Dean ever bring it up. Oh, crap. And maybe neither should I. Would she remember the therapist? Damn. Children under the house. They're free now, guys. Be free, little ones. <laughs> that was super dope, man. Really enjoyed it. Um, there is another one that Vintage H is currently working on called... Um, uh, what's it called? Uh, it lives in the static. And that's still being done now. So maybe we can look at... The oh. My camera just stopped recording. Start now. Maybe we can look at that when that's fully released. Um, I like doing it when it's fully completed and not just like bits and bobs. Uh, but yeah, there we go, guys. Be sure to go check out Vintage 8. That was a fantastic story. They, they That's two out of two now. That's fantastic. The Tangi virus, this one. They've done a couple of others, actually. But... Um, there we go, guys. Hopefully you did enjoy. If you did, be sure to leave a like, rate, and subscribe. All that good stuff. Go check out Vintage 8 in the description down below. And I will see you guys in the next video. Take care, guys.